responsibility as minister is to keep kids in class. That is and should be the most important priority of any government. I mean, we, you all know, as many of you as parents, you've seen the impacts of the pandemic. You've seen the impacts of strikes. You've seen the anxiety imposed on families because of these, what feels like the constant threat of a strike. Every year, every six or 12 months, there's another discussion about some form of education instability. We are providing stability for families. We're getting a fair deal on the table, a tentative agreement with OSSTF. And if we can do this with the other unions, which I know we can, and if they accept it in the coming days, we could provide uh, that certainty for moms and dads, for guardians and parents, and for the kids themselves. So let's put kids first. Let's put their interests first. Let's get this agreement done. The fact that we were able to do so with OSSTF, OSSTF today in a tentative manner, still subject to their membership ratification, but endorsed by their provincial and local leadership, is a positive step forward. I now want to do this right across the board so that we can enter the school year with a real sense of stability. These kids need to focus on academics. We need to get back to those basic foundational skills. You've seen the EQAO data. We've seen significant regression reading, writing, and math. There's no jurisdiction in the world that has not seen that regression. In Ontario, our strategy is premised on keeping them in class, investing in frontline uh, academic success, and emphasizing skills around reading, writing, and math and STEM disciplines. And if we do that, I do believe we're going to see kids lift, improve standards, and outcomes for young people in Ontario. Has binding arbitration been used before in education bargaining? How unusual is this? Um, in the last round, we were able to consent to um, agreements that were negotiated between the parties. Uh, in my experience, this is new. Uh, appreciating I've been as ministers for five years. Um, but I know in other sectors of the civil service and the broader public service, it has been used. There's tons of precedent with across government. Again, the priority of the government was to offer something that we believe is fair for all the parties. So let's continue to negotiate in good faith. If we can't agree on those specific terms, we have a path to get to um, an agreement that is fair, that ultimately a third party will, will decide upon an arbitrator. So we use this in many, many sectors of the economy, many ministries, um, and I have full confidence that we could agree to a mutual third party. All parties would agree to that person, uh, and we get this done. I just think the number one priority for the government is providing some peace, some stability, some hope to young people who faced real challenges over the past years, and I am confident that the plan we put in place will achieve that. The union press release also mentions that there's an agreement to provide a Bill 124 remedy. Can you give us any details on what that might look like? Is that an admission that their wages were unfairly constrained for three years? We, uh, obviously, this is going to go through ratification. And like the last time I did this, when I was before the media four years ago, three years ago, I had to commit to the, maintaining the confidence of that process. This is going to go before their members. I have to respect that process. They need to be able to ratify this independent of myself and other political actors. So I will respect that process. They're, they've got a tentative deal before them. Of course, following ratification, all the details will be unveiled. I could say it's fair for all parties. It keeps kids in school. It provides stability for parents. It allows the government to really focus in on academic improvement, on lifting standards and accountability within our school board system. It allows us to help these kids, frankly, um, get back on track. So it's, it's, it is progress. It is a win-win-win, and it keeps kids in school bargaining with the teacher unions for 13 months and you've only now just come to arbitration so what's been going on at the table have you actually agreed on anything you know we've had 170 meetings with uh, our education partners um, you know keeping in mind that the last round also took time and uh, you know our priority as a government is just to get deals done I mean we believe you know what, ma what should matter most to all the parties is making sure that these kids have some sense of peace so I appreciate we're going to continue to negotiate in good faith. We're going to have spirited discussions at the table. Uh, but we brought forward this proposal. We thought it was sensible because there's a recognition that there are some issues where we are a bit apart on. And so we're going to use the next month or two to negotiate, see if we can bridge those gaps, see if we can get to an alignment that we can both live with. But if we can't, we now have a pathway to avoid a strike, avoid disruption for children. That is important. That is positive. That is what a responsible government would do. I mean, like, just find a way out of uh, a negotiation that just doesn't seem like on every issue there's necessarily uh, a pathway to success. And so we've recognized that. I think the unions recognize that. The employer recognizes that. And therefore, we've come up with that, uh, that, that off-ramp that allows us to avert a strike, provide peace, both provincially and locally, um, and offer a fair process for all the parties. And, and I really think this is a positive step forward for families. The last thing a child or a parent 
need to deal with in the next little while as kids go back to school is the idea that they may be out of school. Um, I, th I think that's really unfair. So this is a positive outcome and I just want to reaffirm our commitment with the other unions calling them in on Monday, meet with us over the coming days. Let's present this offer. Let's get this offer passed. Let's present it to the members. Let's get deals that keep kids in school. That is our priority. It's the Premier's priority. It's my priority. It's Patrice's priority. It's literally the priority, I think, of every parent in Ontario for the parties to be the adults in the room, come together, put their kids first. That's exactly what we've done today. Sir, just on another issue, if you don't mind, under the purview of your ministry, uh, Television Ontario is on strike, and this is a, a service that many Ontarians rely on. Uh, the money, at least for broadcast services, has been reduced over the past few years. What are you going to do, if anything, to help end the strike? Well, uh, first off, you know, the government is not involved uh, uh, on the bargaining between TVO and the Canadian Media Guild. And uh, I appreciate that uh, TVO has issued a statement reaffirming their commitment to journalistic programming and noted that their commitment has grown dramatically over the past few years. What I can simply say is uh, we value the importance that TVO provides, particularly when it comes to online learning and other educational um, programs. And I hope that the parties can come together and get a deal. I think it's important for their members. It is a discussion point, Richard, literally between the Canadian Media Guild uh, and the employer. Uh, we're not involved as the government and myself as minister, so I just I obviously, like you, would like them to get a deal so we can also put this behind us and provide some stability. I know many children benefit from TVO. Uh, I grew up watching TVO, um, and I value what they do, and I just look forward to the parties coming together as we've done today with OSSTF uh, and get a deal.